Eric Wimmer here with Wasatch Heat Cable. So today I'm going to teach you a little bit on how to calculate how much cable you would need for a specific area on your roof. So that when you're done, your, your install looks professional, clean, organized, like somebody actually took some thought on doing it right. So first off, we're going to start off with a basic roof line, okay? Here I've drawn out a roof system as far as just a straight shot across the roof, figuring roughly 20 feet and a 15 foot downspout right here, okay? Now once we have this, you want to take your 20 and as most manufacturers of cable, they have installation instructions giving you a, mat, a multiplier of four. So you multiply your 20 by four. That's gonna give us 80 plus your 15 will give you a total length of 95, okay? Here's the problem is most of the cable you buy at like Home Depot, hardware stores or whatnot, you're gonna be anywhere from an 80 footer to a 100 footer, but there is no 95 footer. So you need to figure out what you gotta do with the excess and how to put this in the system so you don't have a bunch of leftover or that you fall short on your cable length. So once you have your 95, you know you're either an 80 foot cable or maybe a 100 foot cable. And we wanna make this fit into our system so it looks clean. First thing you're gonna wanna do is take your 80 footer and minus your downspout of 15 feet. Right there it gives you 65 feet to work with. So you have 65 feet to fit in this area. Take your 65 and divide that by 20 and you end up getting 3.25, okay? That 3.25 is a very important factor. I'll explain what to do with that in a minute. Let's take our 100 footer minus our 15 for the downspout, gives us 85. We're gonna divide that by the same thing, the 20 right here, our length. So divide it by 20 and you get 4.25, okay? They are similar, but they are very different, but they are far away from our original factor of four. But we wanna make these fit. So now, the next thing you need to consider or to be aware of is where to place the cable. We have a roof system here, so you have your eave, this is your wall on the house, and here is your shingles. You may have one, two, three, four, multiple shingle lips going up your roof edge. <clears throat> In this particular zone, you want to take your wall up to the shingles and land your heat cable, the top loop, in this six inch zone, somewhere between some shingle lips in this zone, okay? Now, once you have that area, you then want to figure your spacing of your loops. Let me do this part in, uh, we'll put some red, brown up here. So let's say we want to go 18 inches most of the time when you space these things out, it's anywhere from maybe 18 up to about 24. You can go bigger or smaller than those, but those are common, common numbers to work with. 18, 19, 20, 24, something like that. But if you take 18, for example, you're gonna take this 18, and now we're gonna bring these factors into this. So you're gonna take 18 times 3.25, and you end up with between those, you know, that's times 18, you end up with 58.5, all right? Now, let's come over on this one, take the 4.25 times the same thing, 18, and you end up with a different number, it's 76.5. Now, here's what you do with those numbers. Take a tape measure. Our spacing is 18, which is our distance between one point to the next. So we're gonna take 18, put our thumb at that part of the tape. You're gonna bring the excess tape measure out to our, start with this one because it's smaller, 58.5. So right, right there at my finger. So I got 58.5, and I'm gonna connect the original point of the tape to that. That right there is my loop for 58.5. 
take that, go up on your roof and check and make sure the top of this loop reaches your six inch zone of where you need that to land. So you'll take that and you'll land it right on the roof. If that's not a big enough loop, you have two options. You can go to your hunter footer and increase the length, which will make your triangle taller. Or here's another thing you can do is you can space that 18 and go, let's say maybe 20 or 24. And when you multiply your 3.25 times, let's say 20, it's gonna make your triangle much bigger. So you may go 20 and then you're gonna add some length on there. You're gonna, you're gonna make that triangle taller. But every time you widen your bottom line right here, if you widen this space, you're going to decrease the efficiency of your cable. So what you want to do is a rule of thumb. You make sure that your distance on the base is always smaller than the distance to the peak. Okay, keep that in mind. That'll keep you in an efficient zone for your cable. If this doesn't work and this 58.5 is just not quite good enough for you, take your 100 footer <clears throat> and let's calculate some numbers on that. So we got this 76.5. Again, we used 18. Now we're gonna take that and we'll go 18. And now we're gonna pull our tape out and go all the way to 76.5. Now look at that triangle. Okay, you're, you're most likely gonna be, you could possibly be even past our six inch zone, which is, it's A-OK, -okay. it's all right to do that. Uh, but you're gonna lose kind of effective material and it's not as useful up there, but you can do that. But if you need to, go to the 100 feet. They don't make a 95, but if you need to jump it up, you can make that fit and then dial in your spacing. Once you have all those numbers calculated in, you can go up on the roof, use a piece of chalk, mark your points on the roof where to put your clips, preset them, run the cable, and when you're done, your system's gonna look like a professional has done it. So calculating the system, this is how you do it. There's a lot of math that's involved. If you have additional questions on installing heat cable, check out our other YouTube videos, or you can always call us. But if this video is helpful, please subscribe to our channel. We'd love you to be able to view more of our content, and I hope this helps you out.